Okay, so we've all been told an infinite number of times that when we need help, we need to ask for it. As little kids, this applies with schoolwork a lot. But as teenagers, we cannot ask for help with school or even common problems that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. When we grow up to be adults, some adults believe that there's no one left to ask for help, that this is a time when we give help, which is widely believed as shown by the fact that one in three eligible voters did not attend the 2014 elections in India. However, this is untrue. When citizens report problems and their opinions, the local and national government can implement and fix the problems and difficulties that citizens face. Public policies are only ever developed after a number of people report an unfavorable situation, at which point the government can decide upon the correct action. When one in three people do not express their opinions, the government is unable to get a good idea of what the people want or need. But when kids and adults do their jobs as voters, they are able to shape the public policy and tell the government exactly where their money will be most appreciated. Overall, the government is able to make much more of an informed decision given the voters' opinion. Public policy is a key feature in society because issues being discussed at great importance can influence the opinion of the public. The next portion of the responsibility that comes with suffrage includes the task of playing a role in good governance practices. Governance is how the government is run and includes transparency, effectivity, efficiency with money, and how well the citizens are able to participate. Many countries are still facing governments with mediocre governance, governance policies because of participation in the elections and transparency. I, being raised in the United States and knowing almost nothing about Indian politics, can only talk about corruption based on research, which tells me that any, any economy is heavily damaged by any corruption within the government. When voters do their jobs as citizens, transparency increases and corruption decreases because as you start to see exactly where money is being spent, there's less uh, space for corruption. Overall, this betters the government policies. While I've stated that kids and adults need to work together in this voting process, I haven't really explained why. Adults and kids experience and notice different things in their day-to-day -day lives. As a high school student, I can tell you that the community needs more bike paths, or the parks need to be cleaned more often. My parents, on the other hand, could tell you that we need to spend more money on increasing sustainability in the community, such as food recycling, or spending more on introducing members of our police force to the community. The problem then arises that kids do not have voting rights, which are introduced at the age of 18. In my community, however, there are many times when kids can speak out. Community meetings, town hall meetings, seldom occur in closed session and are usually at a time that is convenient for all community members, such as the afternoon and evenings. And the agenda is often posted online for all to see. At our local library, the mayor comes and takes opinions from the audience and discusses community events. While kids aren't able to vote for our own good, we are able to let those who make important decisions know what is important and what is significant. Therefore, I stress to all the kids in the audience that we need to tell people what needs to be fixed. An example of this being implemented on a national level would be Sophia from Massachusetts writing a letter to our president inquiring as to why there are no denominations of currency with female portraits on them. Within the year, the president promised to recreate our $10 bill with a well-known woman. Governance shapes our society by dictating our feelings towards our government overall. In the former USSR, there was little to no transparency, and as a result, the lower and middle classes of the society felt nothing more than anti-patriotism and possibly hatred toward their government. The upper class liked their government, but only due to corruption and profiting from others' work. Only through voting and making your opinions heard can you have your difficulties resolved. These are the various issues raised by Prithvi in his uh, speech. In India, one in three voters have uh, not voted. Government can form opinions based on the voters' opinion. Citizens' participation in governance and to ensure transparency, effectivity, efficiency is essential. He talked about corruption in India. Transparency decreases corruption. He said, Sophia from Massachusetts, he, she wrote to the president for female uh, portraits on the currency notes. That's what he talked about. People should uh, vote to express their opinion. So these are the main issues what uh, uh, Prithvi touched. Coming to my uh, responses. Yeah, maybe next uh, slide, please. Educating people on importance of voting, that is also very, very important. Slowly, in our uh, states also, we could bring it up to 70 or so. Last elections, we also gave some advertisements from our school association asking people to vote. 
So that is how. Because if more people vote, what happens is the responsibility of the government also increases. Otherwise, if only 50% people vote, out of that, if I get 26% of votes, then I am confident of forming government. So these 26% I can always locate where these people. So I need not have to do any big uh, uh, governance. Before elections, I can go to this 26%, I can uh, uh, use them and I can get elected. But if suppose say 90% people start voting, then automatically as a politician, I should get 46% of the votes to get. So I start doing more work. So that's why what Prithvi touched is that in order to make people to participate in the governments, we should ask people to come and vote. That is one issue he raised. Then about the corruption also he has raised. That I will show you a small slide. Go to the next slide. This is what Transparency International. It talks about the corruption in the entire India, entire world. There is an organization called Transparency International which maps the corruption in different countries. So if you see we are at 85, 85th position is India's position as far as the corruption perception index is concerned. Whereas if you see, I think United States is coming about 17, I think, no? Well, it is at the 70. The first one, I think, is what, uh, Norway or? Yeah. Uh, Denmark. Denmark is the first country. The second one is this, this thing, I think, New Zealand. Yeah. So these are the countries where the perception is very, very less. There is no corruption. And what I have seen here also, I mean, if you want to get your passport or if you want to get your license and all, I think you submit the documentation and you get it within such time. But whereas we have to go and we have to constantly track the systems there. So corruption is one main thing that we need to attack. So people always feel that people who take money are corrupt. But if you see the Anti-Corruption Act, the people who give money, the people who accept money, both are considered to be corrupt. So the thing from our side is, let us not offer money. Whatever may be the difficulty, I will face it. I will report to the concern. I mean, we need to have patience because we want to improve the nation. So we need to take some hardship if we want to improve. At the same time, from the top also, we should see that corruption is not reduced. So my request to all you people is because technologically you are so advanced. So why not we use the technology to reduce corruption in our country? That is one thing we can always talk about. Maybe the children you can take it up as a project. How technology can be lever leveraged to reduce the corruption there. Maybe having a online processes. Everything can be online like what we do here. Submit your documentation here and you get the things. That can be the possibility. Next. Go back. Yeah. Then legislations against corruption are also there. And another big thing what we have uh, there in India is the Right to Information Act. It is enacted in the year 2005. Suppose if I want to know how government has taken a decision, I can get the information. So Right to Information is a big tool what we have to find out the decision making of the government. So there are a lot of things that are being made into now the Lokpal authority is also being created. And also Lokayaktas and Lokpals are also coming. And you have the anti-corruption acts. And also you have the right to information. So all these things together, let us hope that a day will come where we also figure somewhere in better. I mean we were 94, now we have come to 85. So the things are improving. Slowly if we all co cooperate and coordinate and definitely we can see a day where we can be in the first step. So let us hope. So thank you, Prithvi, for your uh, presentation. Well done. Any other uh, uh, response or uh, listening from the audience? Yes. Uh, two weeks ago, I went for a wedding in India. Yeah. Uh, then I got a harassment in the customs uh, in Mumbai. I was carrying all my old jewelry and I got into the role if uh, more than one lakh of jewelry we carry, we have to pay 36% tax expenses. I mean, any anything like normally these days, any woman definitely carries more than one lakh. So, but what is the right process for that? Why don't uh, they educate us and follow us to follow and train us to follow the rule and we follow the rule? Because old jewelry, where can I get the receipts? What's the process? Yeah, that is uh, true. I mean, the moment you land, I think, most people who are going to Rati, 
Customs and Duty. Yeah, so you have to pay some two thousand dollars of the customs duty there. Okay. Where shall I pay for it? And why should I pay for it twenty years ago? Okay. But I think as per the customs, it only the new. If you purchase some jewelry, only on that you have to. If we purchase jewelry outside, uh, if we purchase jewelry outside and import it to India, then we have to pay the import duty tax. Okay. But if I purchased the jewelry 20 years ago when I was in India, I'm just carrying from here for the sake of the wedding. Okay. Why should I pay a customs duty tax? Right. I just uh, note down. Uh, I, I was explaining to the officer that's not the case, yeah, and yeah. he says I'm not the one who makes the rules. Then I don't have time to go and investigate the customs rules in India. Yes. I say I work nine to five job and I have family. I don't. I can't fight your customs rule. You talk to your boss and make the rules so people can follow the rule. Why should we make rules that people can't follow? That's my. So this issue I have to note it down. Maybe the. Another thing what you can have is that even from uh, that's what I'm telling about the right to information act. That also we can get the information. Anyway, I have to uh, note it down here. It's there on the on the customs, customs uh, form, form. It's there like one lakh jewelry is allowed. Allow. Anything more than one lakh is thirty six percent import duty tax. Okay. But they are asking you for the receipts. Receipts and also more than one lakh it is thirty six percent. More than one lakh jewelry and we have to estimate the jewelry and on that estimation whatever appraisal comes in we have to pay thirty six percent. What is this? this is like one lakh is so low amount low. these days and thirty six percent is too high. And it's impractical for any woman to follow the rules. So, I'll just check up at night. And it happened in Bombay. Bombay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I would just like to add to the voting stuff. The candidates who are running are quite We usually vote for the party rather than the actual candidate him or herself. So uh, to make the voting process more fair, we should vote for the candidate rather than the party he or she is running for. And also, the bribe of people. Oh, uh, when I went to India a couple of years ago, I asked my great grandmother who she was voting for, and she basically told me it's that guy because he paid her. He paid the old people and everyone to work for him, rather than, it wasn't fair. They were not looking for their policies or anything. We should educate the more uh, public more on the policies and stuff, and prevent people who are driving the people into voting for them. That is true. I mean, that is what uh, I was talking about in the initial, that uh, people, uh, if uh, you don't vote, and finally, this is the problem. People go and uh, pay those people who can make money and vote, and finally we get such governments. So that's why what uh, you suggested is that I mean, uh, people should be educated. So again, everything finally, all these three presentations, finally the bottom line is education. Everything comes to education only finally. I mean, that's what, once people get educated, their uh, thought process will change and they will not uh, resort to such type of things. Right. Thank you very much.